The Kingdom of Hyrule and Breath of the Wild is truly fascinating. You're darn right it is. The landscapes, unique architecture, wildlife, lively settlements, and my personal favourite, the history. This blood-spilled, battle-torn land has a story or two to tell. The horror show at Castletown, the defence of Fort Hiteno, the siege of the Akala Citadel, and so many other epic stories. But the thing about many of these forgotten tales is that they are, well, forgotten. You don't say. What? Anyway, my point being is that there are so many ruins, destroyed settlements, and just general things that are left unexplained. But this is actually what I love about this game. The lack of story in some cases, the pages to fill, and to get to the point, the fact that most fragments of the past in this game are left for us, the player, to create a story with our own interpretation. For example, the ruined remains of the Shadow Hamlet. Oh hey, I cover that one actually, over- it First sight, just another destroyed settlement, but considering the surroundings, inhabitants, and current condition, it has been theorised that this settlement was burnt to a crisp by the lone whiz robe still haunting the area today. A fantastic theory by my great friend- a masked Nintendo bandit. Hey there, that's me, I made that theory. Wait, wait, are you that voice I've been hearing this whole time? Sure am, buddy. Uh, okay. Well, sure, that makes- Sense? But, 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 but don't think about it too much, man. What's important is that I'm here now. I mean, yeah, it has been a little while since we last collaborated. Sure has, good sir. So what are we discussing today? Ooh, let me guess, it's something Zelda related? <laughs> Oh, Bandit, you're such a funny guy. Well, today, due to popular fan suggestion, we're going to be taking a look at the ruined and flooded remains of Dea Village in what could potentially be one of the most horrifying tales from 100 years ago. Now, you've been here before, Mr. Bandit. You know the drill. Take it away. Be sure to grab yourself a snack or drink, folks, and send them in on social media to get featured right here. And now, let's take a look at the horrifying fate of Dea Village in Breath of the Wild. To begin with, and for later reference, we should establish exactly where the village is and inspect its current state. Dea Village can be found in the West Nekluda region by the Dueling Peaks. It's a rather large settlement in full, but one that's easy to miss as it's tucked away within a little valley of hills surrounding it on all sides. Funny enough though, most players actually walk right past it as it's off to the side of the path that the majority of players take after leaving the Great Plateau. The settlement itself now lies in a shallow marshland with every single building and structure in peace pieces. This is, of course, no rare sight in Hyrule, however. All over the place, we see in almost every destroyed settlement the roofs completely blown off homes, the walls decimated by guardians, and in some cases leaving nothing behind but foundations. The attacks from the guardians were devastating. However, there doesn't appear to be any guardian remains here as you'd often suspect, but we'll get into that a little bit later. The village looks like it once had a total of around 18 buildings, a mix of homes, likely some stores, possibly some storage houses. Point being, not really a small settlement by any means, but yet we never hear stories of it in game. Surely a village this large had some sort of significance, right? Well, a few key details to take note of now would be A. Dea Lake, a location marked separately but still connected to the village, B. The large knocked over tree, and C. The water. Now hold up, I know it sounds silly to acknowledge the water of all things, but it's commonly believed that this village was flooded entirely, which may not actually be the case. Again, more on that later though. This is basically everything we know from in-game. A good starting point to build from, but what exactly happened here? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, the downfall of this village may not be as clear as you may think. Yes, it obviously was due to the calamity. Almost everything destroyed was due to the calamity. But can we trace some stuff back to figure out exactly what happened here? Like with the previously mentioned Shadow Hamlet. In my recent community post, I asked you guys what you want to see and what you think of Dea Village Ruins. And there were three general outcomes predicted. Firstly, the village was flooded, which resulted in the destruction of it, which is possible, but probably not the case here, believe it or not. You see, the village possibly already had some of this water 100 years ago. Not exactly like this, but perhaps more like this. Now, this is actually a fan-made map from one of you guys, so big thanks to Tornado Hoodle for sending it in. They depict how the village may have looked pre-calamity, and there is evidence to back this up. Their depiction of the village shows that it was once a marshland of sorts, but with little 
little bridges and more land to walk on, with a connecting point to Dale Lake. Something interesting to know is that in Age of Calamity, a game showing us Hyrule 100 years ago, we can actually see Dea Village on the map, and it does in fact have water here. So this clearly wasn't flooded. This water was here, and people lived with that. Now this could just be a lack of updating on the map, but we'll roll with it for now. It is stated in-game, travellers praise the local dishes of Dea Village, which are made from the fish from the lake's pure waters. And this famous dish itself is made of an armoured porgy, mighty porgy, hearty bass, hyrule herb, and bright-eyed crab. All freshwater species, other than the Hyrule herb. This tells us that Dea Village was most likely a fishing village well known for its cuisine. But you may be asking yourself, why on earth is this important, dude? Well, this nullifies the possibility of the village flooding entirely and being the cause for its destruction, as it most likely was already a water-based settlement. And honestly, that would make so much sense as it is found within a small valley-like area with hills on all sides. Rainfall would naturally flow down to the basin, which is the village itself. Obviously some parts were raised land such as this well, as we can see the water almost engulfing it nowadays, but before this was likely more raised. So I think it's safe to say that the village's downfall wasn't due to a flood from the lake or rainfall. Secondly, many of you suggested that it was attacked, but not by guardians, but monsters. Now, this one interests me, as it does have some validity, but ultimately, I believe this is false. The point many of you made was that for this to be a guardian attack, there would surely need to be some sort of guardian remains here, as the inhabitants would have fought back as much as they could, which is something we see at other ruined settlements. Bolts, joints, and occasionally a leg broken off from the efforts of those murdered by the corrupt Sheikah tanks. But here, we see no remains. So it is somewhat likely that no guardians made it down to Dea Village, to stomp over the settlement, like almost every other settlement faced. Rather, this one was left to monsters. I believe that is possible, but not the case here, as if we inspect the degree of damage inflicted to the buildings, they are completely decimated. Sure, monsters could damage, burn, and maybe break houses down a little, but to this degree? I think not. We do see a few Lizalfos, a fire whiz rope, and stone talus nowadays, but I personally believe they came after the attack. With the Lizalfos perhaps migrating from their more common home of Pharaon, the whiz rope just happened to be here, and the one many of you asked about, the stone talus likely made the village its home following the calamity. It is possible that the talus is responsible for this destruction, but my question is more, how did it reach here? To enter, it would have had to make an uphill climb and drop down, something we don't see the talus end enemies very capable of due to their sheer size. They are more of a steady artillery rather than an enemy that can scale hills and uneven land very well. That is partially speculation however. I personally just couldn't see the demolition of 18 plus buildings being the work of just monsters. Well, what could it be then? I mean, you already ruled out it being a complete flood or guardians or monsters. What exactly was it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hey, uh, you already used that line. Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, I never ruled out that it was not Guardians themselves. I ruled out that it was Guardians making their way into Dea Village. In fact, I believe what happened here could be much worse. So devastating, so malicious, and honestly, so cruel that nobody stood a chance within Dea Village. You see, with most of the Guardian attacks across Hyrule, they ran riot, destroying town after town, village after village, and straight up going Anakin Skywalker on these innocent settlements, killing not just the men, but the women and the children too. They were relentless. However, most of these settlements had a fighting chance, a chance to defend, an opportunity to try and run, a very slim, but hopeful chance of survival. However, Dea Village didn't. It's starting to become clear that Dea Village was in fact attacked by guardians, but not in the conventional sense. You see, the layout of Dea Village worked really well in favor of a fishing village. It was large but tucked away within the hills, free from hassle and danger of the land, but this is what we believe led to their downfall. The guardians are without a doubt in the elite category of enemies. They are powerful, chaotic, and literally malicious. What could have happened here, and hear us out for a moment, is that Dea village was horrifically decimated out of an existence by an attack from above. 
It makes so much sense when you think about it. The village has no remains of guardian scraps from an attempted defense. The buildings were destroyed in the exact same fashion as other guardian-ridden settlements, and the most horrifying part of all of this is that they wouldn't have stood a chance. The guardians would have climbed atop the surrounding hills and began relentlessly blasting building after building after building. And you remember the large knocked over tree? Well, a series of guardian lasers could also explain how that got knocked over. I mean, it would take a lot of power to knock this titan down. That would also explain why the lake and village are now one connected water source. Presumably, the lake was a bit deeper in the past as it was used for fishing. The fall of this great tree likely destroyed whatever was keeping the lake and village separated, and helps to back up a statement found in creating a champion saying that the village did not survive the assault of the guardians and has since been swallowed up by the lake. This would have been an attack that they could not predict or even see coming to some degree. The villagers would have obviously known that the calamity was upon them, but to see the guardians for the first time in this manner, standing tall above them atop the hills ready to blast their homes, their memories, their livelihood, and even their loved ones, would be truly horrifying. And to dive deeper into this, it would also sync up really well with the timeline of the events of the defense of Fort Hateno. A flood of guardians moved out from central Hyrule through the dueling peaks to reach Fort Hateno. We can even see the guardian remains right here, just down the road from Deya Village. It's not too bold to assume that some of these guardians scaled the hills and stumbled upon the unsuspecting villagers of Deya Village, and without hesitation, turned it to nothing more than rubble. The tale of Dea Village is such a sad and heartbreaking story, a once peaceful and well-known village just torn apart without a glimmer of hope. At least other settlements had a somewhat fighting chance, but the natural lair of Dea Village ultimately led to its horrifying downfall. Of course, this is just a theory based on what we know, but for me, that is exactly what these games are all about when it comes to unexplained stuff, leaving it up to us, the player, to come up with our own story to tell. You can't not love this series for that. But there you you have it. That is our tale of the horrifying fate of Dea Village in Breath of the Wild. Thanks a ton for watching, I really hope you enjoyed and if you did be sure to drop a like as that's ultimately what tells YouTube to recommend these videos more and help the channel grow. And also consider subscribing for more Zelda content. Huge thank you to my good buddy Bandit for joining me on this one. Well of course man, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to work with you and I'm sure it won't be too long until we work together again. Thank you guys as well for putting up with listening to me on your boy's channel here. I'll see you all next time. It was a pleasure as always to work with you good sir. We did another video over on his channel talking about the goddess statues in Breath of the Wild, and a potential secret within them dating back to Skyward Sword. Links below and in the card on screen. Another huge thanks goes out to all of my amazing channel supporters. Your incredibly generous support enables me to create these videos week in, week out for all of you. And special mention to our newest supporters, both joining through Patreon, Calibur and Jared. Thank you guys for the support. If you'd like to help support the channel and get your name featured at the end of all of my videos and more, then consider supporting via Patreon or YouTube. Again, thanks for watching, and until the next next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.